Welcome to iLecture Online. The examples are beginning to be more and more interesting here. So what we have here is a bar which can hinge on one end and it's supported by a spring on the other end. Now, initially the spring would not reach all the way down to the bar. This would be the natural length of the spring. So when you attach the spring to the bar, the weight of the bar will pull the bar it will pull the spring until the force of gravity on the bar causing it, well, actually the torque on the bar and the torque caused by the spring until those are at equilibrium. And supposedly there will be equilibrium when the bar is horizontal. So normally if you place the bar in the horizontal state attached to the spring, then nothing would move. It would just sit there. And then of course, once you pull it down and you let go, the bar would oscillate back and forth. And we're trying to find the equation of motion of this particular system. Let's call the distance from where the unstretched spring reaches to where the bar is horizontal, that extra extension of the spring where we pull it down, that let's call that x sub naught. That's not a variable, that is actually a constant value. And we don't know yet what that is. And then the additional distance the spring is elongated. Notice we can use L, the length of the bar, times the angle theta to get that additional distance right there. So it looks like the variable that we're working with will be the variable theta. Now, what we need to do to solve this using the Lagrangian, we'll need to find the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the system. And so let's start with the kinetic energy of the system. The kinetic energy will be equal to, and now notice that the bar will only swing back and forth like this, attached to one end. So we're looking at rotational motion of the bar. So the kinetic energy will be one half, the moment of inertia times omega squared. Well, the moment of inertia of a bar that's attached to one end is one third the length times, well, we also need the mass, so let me put the mass there, it would be one third the mass times the length squared. So this becomes equal to one half times one third the mass times the length squared. And we'll, we'll write the L as a little L to, differ, to differentiate it from the big L for the Lagrangian. So that's the moment of inertia. And then omega, well, omega, that would be theta dot. So we'll write as theta dot squared. And that means that the kinetic energy then becomes one sixth m L squared theta dot squared. And so that will then be the kinetic energy in terms of the only variable in the system theta, and that's why we're only looking for a single equation of motion. Now we need the potential energy, and that's a little bit more tricky here. Okay, let's try it. So the potential energy is equal to, well, first of all, it'll be the potential energy of the spring, and that means it's going to be one half k times the elongation squared and the elongation will be the sum of x sub naught plus the l theta quantity squared that will be the potential energy stored in the spring and then minus because the bar loses height now the center mass will be at the middle so the distance that the middle drops would be half of this so the drop in potential energy will be m times g times half of L theta, so L theta over two. And that will then give us the potential energy. But notice we're stuck with this X sub naught. We know it's a constant, but what is that constant equal to? Well, notice that we said in the beginning that if everything is just in a constant stationary mode, in a static mode with the bar horizontal, the weight of the bar will be canceled out by the force on the spring keeping the bar horizontal, which means that the sum of the torques about this point must add up to zero. So the sum of the torques add up to zero, and so what is that equal to? Well, we have the mg, and let me use a different color. So we have this torque right here, that mg, and notice that gives us a clockwise torque, which is a negative torque, that would be minus mg times the distance, and that distance here, well, since the angles are very small, we can simply call that, uh, that distance half of L, so it would be L over two, L over two, and that would be the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action, the force, 
it's negative because it gives you a clockwise torque and then minus the force of the spring and uh, let's see here the force of the spring that would be in its natural unstretched state well stretch because the spring in natural length is this but without pulling it down any further from its equilibrium point and so that would be uh, kx so kx sub naught times l because we have to multiply the force times the perpendicular distance and so we get l all right so now this balances out so we have the torque caused by the weight of the beam through the center mass counterbalanced oh uh, let's see here that would be plus i'm sorry that would be a plus because this acts in a counterclockwise clockwise direction so it's plus the force on the spring kx times the distance from where this force acts to the point of rotation and since that's equal to zero that means that the l's cancel out like this which means that we can write this as kx sub naught is equal to when we move the other side mg over 2 and then moving the k down here so x sub naught equals mg over 2k which means we we can replace x sub naught by mg over 2k and substitute that in here so the potential energy is equal to one half k times mg over 2k plus L theta quantity squared minus mg L over 2. Oh, L theta over 2. All right, so now we have the kinetic energy and we have the potential energy of the system. And we've replaced x sub naught, which was a constant by variables or constants that we know. We know m, g, and k, supposedly they gave those to us. Now we're ready to find this equation. So first we find the, the uh, partial derivative of L. Well, before I do that, I should write what L is equal to, right? So L is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So this is equal to the kinetic energy of 1 sixth m L squared theta dot squared minus this. So that becomes minus 1 half k times mg over 2k plus L theta quantity squared and then minus times a minus gives us a plus mg L theta over 2. All right so now we have the Lagrangian and now we can find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot x equal 2. Notice there's no theta dot over this part, only over here. So we have 2 times 1 sixth, which is 1 third ml squared times theta dot. Okay, and now we're going to take the time derivative of this. So now we take the ddt of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. And so that simply gives us 1 third ml squared theta double dot or the acceleration of that so there we have this part of the equation now we need to find the partial of l with respect to x oh well in this case of course it's going to be theta right so we find the partial of l with respect to theta and that means that this becomes zero this part becomes zero but here's a theta in there and there's a theta as well all right so the partial of L with respect to theta is equal to. So we have minus one half K times, oh, wait a minute. This standing here is squared. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know what? To make it easier, we may want to just multiply all that out. Well, let's try that. Let's try that. So I'm going to repeat L over here but multiply this part out here, that just makes it easier to see. Otherwise, it may be too, too easy to make a mistake. So let's try that. So we write L is equal to 1 sixth m L squared theta dot squared minus 1 half k times the first quantity squared. So we get m g over 2k quantity squared that's just a constant squared 
plus twice the product of what's inside, so plus two times the product that will cancel out this two right here, so we end up mg k l theta, mg over k l theta, mg over k times l times theta, so twice the product of those two, that gets rid of the two, and this squared, so plus l squared theta squared, and notice that's multiplied by times the minus one half k, each of those terms, and then at the end we still have a plus m g l theta over two. And now when we do this, it makes it a lot easier to take care of that. So that goes to zero, the first term is a constant that goes to zero. Here we have a theta in there, so it is minus one half k times this, the k's cancel out, and we end up with, uh, well we still have the minus, don't we? We still have the minus, so minus the k's cancel, m g l, over 2. And then here we end up with 2 times a half, the 2's two's, the two's cancel. We have a mi minus, so we have minus, we have k l squared theta to the first power. The 2 is gone. Alright. And then we take the partial of this, or the partial of this with respect to theta, so we end up with a minus or plus, I should say, mgl over 2. Well, notice this, I have a minus mgl over 2 and a plus mgl over 2, so that cancels out. That's always nice when we can do that. And we're left with a minus kl squared theta for the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. And now finally, when we want to f find the equation of motion, we take the first part, which is this, so we end up with one-third m l squared theta double dot minus the partial of l with respect to, in this case, theta, which is minus this, that becomes plus k l squared theta, and that equals zero. And of course, you could rewrite it where you have theta double dot in the front, so that means, oh, well, wait a minute here. We can simplify, the L squared cancels out, so that makes it nice, L squared cancels out. Uh, we multiply everything by 3 and divide everything by M, so essentially what we can write is as theta double dot uh, plus 3K over M theta equals 0, and maybe that's a more compact form to write the final answer. And that's then the equation of motion of that oscillating bar attached to that spring. And that is how it's done. <laughs> I think you fell asleep. Let's see if I got this right. Yeah.